Hi guys, it's Jamie here and we're going to do a slightly different preview today. We're going to go through some of the things I've been doing behind the scenes that I haven't videoed, a quick recap of what's coming up in this video and I'm going to tell you about the competition. Doing envelopes today, you will find the templates for the envelopes that are being used in the description. You click on that link, it takes you to a file which you can then download to your device. This I did the other day, which has a secret pocket, of course, and also a journaling spot. This has a pocket here. I've added some lace. This is one of our envelopes with a template. I've added these pockets here and this one and some lace. This flip out has been added since you were last here, as has that backing there more lace has been added here we've got another template it's actually a pocket with a tag here we've got a tuck spot with another one of the envelopes from the template we have this double page spread and two more envelope templates that style and that style as you can see i was right to keep the signature in the center quite small because this is already crocodile mouse this is actually going to be the competition prize so the competition is currently on the playlist is called the scrappy journal because it's a combination of some prompts for february which was roses lace fairy and butterflies science papers from the eclectic paper craft art company and everything that was on the left hand side of my desk <laughs> that's basically what's gone into this journal plus the original book pages that came out when we made the cover i would like you if you want to win this to make a suggestion in the comments on this or any of the videos that relate to this playlist the scrappy or the scrap buster journal playlist what you think this journal should be called like we've had the dolce vita journal we've had the gothic horror journal what can this be called because i don't think scrap pasta journal does it justice so give me an idea i will select the winning name and they will receive this journal when it's finished don't forget i do have timestamps on the video so that you can go backwards and forwards to areas that interest you because in this video we are creating envelopes, decorating them and decorating the pages they are going on to. So there's quite a few bits and pieces to this video. So it's good to break it up and then you choose what you're interested in. And now we're going to go back in time or you may fast forward <laughs> to the start of the envelope project. Here are the templates that I'm going to be using. This is two envelopes here. This one with an insert card. We have another two templates, two sort of petal shaped templates. Here are the envelopes cut out, so glued onto the back of the book page. I'm now edging this book page with the Victorian velvet. I'll probably edge this one with the vintage photo. Next, going to use a permanent ink stamp to stamp over this. I have the Memento Black and I want to use a script stamp. I'm not even going to attempt to get the script the right way around on the different folds. The way to avoid that is to go at angles across the envelope. Same with the second envelope at angles. Before folding these together, the next stage is going to be use a napkin to cover these. Separating the napkin bottom layer away. I shall be randomly tearing it. Using some Mod Podge, you can use white PVA glue water down a little. Cover the whole envelope with the Mod Podge. This will move your ink if you've used Distress Ink because it's not permanent, but it should not move the black permanent ink.
I'm going to cover the whole lot and let it dry. On the reverse, you'll see that you can see those lines. Now, if you want to, you can cover the inside of the envelope and I might do some simple inking and stamping so that when the envelope is opened, it's not just a blank piece of paper. And all I'm using is the scoreboard to go down the fold lines. To save time, if you are gonna decorate the inside, I'm going to take into account what's not going to be seen. So by doing the folding first, I have a better visual of what somebody opening the envelope is going to see. You could go back over this with more of the napkin. It's still not too thick when it comes to folding. The one reason I like using napkins and Mod Podge or paper and Mod Podge is it gives it a material, flexible feel. Let's make a decision as to whether we are going to use some more napkin or not to finish that look or keep it like that as a contrast. Imagine opening that. Yeah, I like a contrast. Get the bone folder, go along these lines to get a good fold in there. I'm also going to re-ink some of these bits. The only bit you're gluing is along this edge here. I am going to use a silicon glue because it's so thick it will need a strong glue. And then when I fold it over, I'm going to fold that again to spread the glue a little bit and I will actually hold that down. While it dries. When it comes to putting these envelopes onto a page, I have this paper that I have cut in half and cornered. It fits beautifully on the length, a little short on the width, but that's fine. We want people to know there's a book page under this. You could, if you wanted to, um, create a tuck spot here and make a big pocket as well as having a backing because I intend to make a small pocket actually on the page as well, or a maybe a corner pocket. I think I am just going to glue this one down rather than create pocket and pocket because you can go a bit too pocket mad, don't you think? Or maybe you can't, I don't know. Let's just edge it. In this kit, there are actually corner pockets that match that paper to save time and it will still be pretty because we've handmade the envelopes I'm going to cut these corner pockets out to go down those lines so that this can be folded and create a deeper pocket than we normally create. So when you add wings to a pocket, it gives it a depth, which means it can hold more. It's not quite so tight against the page as ones that don't have the wings. Those two bits to hold that one down. And we can put that there. I think that works quite well. I will clip that again just to help it dry in place. If you wanted to, you could decorate the front of that. I don't think it's necessary. And all I'm probably going to put in here is just some coffee stained paper so it's a piece of blank paper you could journal on because we are going to have so many journaling cards. I will make the next pocket and pop the other envelope, which is a different color and a different size, but that doesn't matter. We're not doing matchy matchy. Put that in that pocket and then we've done our center pages. Moving on to our next two envelopes, we have this petal style envelope and another kind of petal style envelope again will be putting them onto book pages and cutting them out. Here's the next two envelopes. This one was too big to fit on the book page. So I used a, another piece of paper. And again, can see those score lines through that template. 
So we'll just be using the scoreboard and those score lines to show us the fold points on these envelopes. I've looked at this one and the different ways to glue it down, whether you leave one flap up and glue the rest, but that would make the entrant entry to the envelope quite small. So I think it is better to have two closures. You need to just basically glue virtually all the way around this with a small gap at the top and hold that one on to that one. This second one is a much easier gluing system. It makes a little square envelope. Two in, that one on top. These are much smaller than the previous two envelopes. So there might be a pocket that we've already made that they may fit. If not, we'll do something different again. See this little pocket here on this page could probably hold one of the envelopes. Yeah, I might decorate the front of this one with a little something like maybe a label, a number. A, oh, I know what I've still got in my pile. I have a flower sticker somewhere. Still trying to use the scraps up. There's that flower sticker. This is from the page that was just cut to fit the center. We're doing the three collage rule and then the flower going across like that. I'll edge that and stick all of that down. We will quickly decorate this one. Again, I am still working on my scraps pile. Another three piece collage. With this one, I've inked the edges as well. We've got this one here. Let's see if it'll fit. Yep, okay. So this pocket is now actually full, but the secret one isn't. We have one envelope left. I've already made up one of the envelopes that comes with this template. You'll get the whole templates and you get the idea of how to put them together by now. We need to just put this little very simple pocket, I suppose this one is really more than an envelope, together. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a bit of glue along the top of that join and then add this pink washi tape. To decorate this one we have some of this paper left over so a little bit of scrap of that has been torn and edged with vintage photo ink. Now the problem with using this material, because I've, I've put the hole in and put a bit of ribbon in here, is glue tends to show through on this. So I'm going to see if it's going to show through. Possibly not, so hopefully that will hold it because it is only print stick, but it's not showing through. This is a sticker. All I've done is edge it with the Victorian Velvet Distress ink to pick up on the pink here. Again, this was in the big pile of scraps to be used. I was going to put something like that over that corner. It pulls this little tag together with that a little bit. We have this one to decorate. We're going to go with putting some of this on Then we had the strip of paper. We've got this. 
could do like a square of that yeah looks like a um, envelope label doesn't it and then what else have I got in my scraps pile I have a flower or that flower I think I will go with tearing this down this one I think edge in pink again yeah why not you could combine it with the vintage photo as well that's quite a nice look a bit of both sort of brownie pink then I think we'll edge in pink throw that down around there we have an alternative bit of paper that box is just a bit too big and empty it's not got any interesting print on it so if we stick another one on top we've got a bit more of an interest going on on that box now here we go we're going to find a page for this pocket obviously there's a lot of print on that pocket which i don't necessarily want just thinking what we could do we still have napkin and we have the bit that's just plainer cover the page with that as a decorative element to take down a bit of that print i did wrap that over and do it on the opposite side so that's now a very flexible almost like material piece of paper i'm going to put this pocket on this page and it'll be the only thing going on to this page I'm not going to do any extra secret pockets. This journal has got a lot of pockets. Give it a good amount of glue, roughly in the center of the page, and hold it down, or get a heavy weight and push it down. This is the slightly bigger envelope, and the back's been covered with ink stamp, script, some vintage, fo uh, vintage photo tint and that very beautiful napkin. I need to find a page for this and how it's going to go on the page. Initially I was thinking of an altered paper clip but I want to do those in a separate video along with other bits of ephemera like a video where you do altered paper clips, flips, you know a few different things to zuz up a journal. I don't think I will be doing that but I did find this now this is years old I think it was when I was scrapbooking years and years and years ago and part of a modern Christmas card kit and it had the raised things on it so I think what I'm going to do it's got a bit of glue on it I don't th initially I was going to cover it because it's more modern and it's glittery and whatever but it's got the gingham check on it and we've used some gingham check throughout and in a way I feel it fits. What I will do is put it on a page, another book page and I'm going to use these ones, you can see I've taken some off and actually moved them and glued them on with the silicone glue to make sure they stick and I'll put silicone glue on there and it will raise it up so then it will be a, a raised tuck spot. Going back to the scraps then, what do we have for decorating background? Science kit, and we still have the science theme going on. We've got a bit of this, which has the check in it, the gingham, which I could rip. And then we could do with something here. I may have to go with, oh, got a little bit of decoration. I wonder if you could, ooh, you could just cover that star with the rose. I found this sort of flower petal washi. I want to line this up along the edge. This page has now been covered with this and I've covered the reverse with another piece from that kit which again you could journal on and it is smooth enough to journal on. I'm going to put that in that corner. A little bit of glue on each raised bit and isn't that weird because it was a Christmas thing but those little circles almost look sciency. This is nicely stuck down. The envelope's all dry and ready to go. I'm going to tuck it in there. 
I will go back through at some point and add coffee papers or tickets or ephemera to the envelopes and some of the pockets. That's kind of it for today. Thank you for joining me. And don't forget, a thumbs up goes a long way with the YouTube algorithm and helps other people who've never come across my videos see my videos. If you want to take part in the competition, you need to be a subscriber and make a suggestion for the name of this journal, which you can do in the comments below. And I will see you next time.